In this video I'm going to show you how to use your Sharp EL531X calculator. And by the end of this video you should have a good idea about how this calculator works and you'll be able to do pretty much anything on the calculator. Though I do have some more advanced videos that will go through something specific in great detail. This will give you a wide overview of everything this calculator is able to do and you can fill in the rest of it yourself but you'll be familiar with its working so that shouldn't be difficult the first thing you probably want to know is how to turn it off so you, to do this you press uh, second function and then on and that turns the calculator off um, you also want to be able to move between degrees radians and gradients to do this you want to use this DRG button here and you'll notice that this at the top changes so that now reads rad for radians after you press that and then pressing it again will take us into gradients and then back to degrees when you're doing calculations you want to make sure you're in the mode that you want to be in otherwise you'll get answers that will confuse you you can also do conversions on this calculator so if we put in 90 equals we're in degrees mode if we press second function and then the pi button that converts it to radians but it also changes the mode of the calculator to radians so be aware of that. Second function, pi puts us into gradients, and then second function, pi again, gets us back to degrees. So if you're doing these conversions, do realize that it is changing the mode of your calculator. So you can use the DRG button to get it back into that mode. Fractions, another useful application of this calculator, though I don't like the way it does fractions on this calculator. It's the fractions are far better done on Casio calculators, but you can do fraction operations just the same, i.e. it gives you the same answer. So let's look at how the fraction function works. So we've got this A, B over C button. By pressing that we can access um, its fraction functions. So let's put in a quarter. So to do this we press 1 then this AB over C button, and that gives us this R, and then 4, and we get 1R4. That's how the calculator represents a quarter. Um, we can also put in 1 and a quarter, which is done in this funny way. So you press 1, AB over C, then 1 again, fractions button again, and then 4 equals, and you get 1R1R4, one one just how this calculator thinks about fractions, which is uh, quite an annoying way of doing it. And of course, if we were to add a qu um, three quarters to this, so three and then four, we would get two. So this is one and a quarter plus three quarters, which is two. So it can do additions, subtractions, multiplications, and divisions. Though sometimes you have to be careful about where the brackets are. Uh, make sure you're doing the calculation that you want to be doing. Another cool function on this calculator, it's probably my favourite function, is the random functions. So if you press second function and then seven you can access four different random functions. You've got rand that will give you a number, or just a random decimal between zero and zero point nine nine nine. Roll dice is probably my favourite function. This is just like a dice. You press equals and it rolls a dice. So it generates a random number between one and six. I'm going back into the random function. If you press the arrow keys, you can see mode 2 and 3. 2 is a coin toss, so a random number 0 or 1 representing heads and tails, or a random integer, which is um, just a random number between 1 and 99. Uh, now that you've got used to playing around with your calculator, you may put it in an annoying mode and want to get it back. In general, the way you do this would be to press mode and then zero and that usually gets you back into the normal modes however if you've really been playing around with it like you've done something like this and you want to do five times five and it won't let you you've put it into a different counting system the way to reset it is there's a button on the back and if you press that in like that the calculator is now reset and calculations work the same way all right moving on the ANS function, which is um, basically accessing the memory of the calculator. So if we did 
5 times 5, which is 25, and then we press alpha, and then the ands button, we could add 5 to that and get 30. So the ands function pulls up the last um, result that you've got in the calculator, and that's quite helpful. So let's look at the statistics, which you'll probably be quite interested in. We've got things like single variable statistics, so to get in that mode we're pressing mode 1 and then 0. So if we want to save stuff to the memory, we'll just press a number, M+, plus, another number, M+, plus, increments the data set. So we've got two things in our data set. And we can do various calculations. If you look at the green um, functions on the calculator, these are what you can access by the alpha key and your statistics functions. Like you've got this SX, which is one of your forms of standard deviation. And you've got sigma X, which is another form of the standard deviation. Sigma X is based on the N definition, and SX is N minus 1. You may want to work with two variables. So this is another um, statistics mode. So to get into this, you're pressing uh, mode 1 and then 1. There's also three variable statistics which you can do. Um, say we wanted to enter 2, 3, so we've got an X and a Y series of data. So pressing 2, second function, then STO, 3, and then M plus saves 2, 3. And we can do various calculations with this. And I have videos taking you through this in great detail with some of the associated theory. So we can find Pearson's R and uh, regression coefficients, so you can fit the data to a line. So that's a very quick overview of how your Sharp EL531X calculator works, and hopefully after this video you know what you're doing and can work this calculator reasonably well. Thank you for watching.